Now that I've seen how easy this is to operate, I will never go back to the two-person brake bleeding method. And I never have a second person around, and the person who comes doesn't really want to help me to begin with, so this is just by far the way to go. I've hooked my pressure bleeder cap up to the reservoir, and of course, here's my gauge. I'm going to keep an eye on that, and here's my pump, and I'm going to pump this handle to build up pressure. So I'll build up the 10 PSI, and then I'll go ahead and bleed. You can see that needle rising. I'll just let that sit right there, and then I'll put the vehicle in the air, get underneath, and bleed the brakes. So I've got my drain hose here that's gonna drizzle into my catch pan, and a wrench here. And if I open that up, it's definitely flowing. A couple bubbles there. Now that I've seen how easy this is to operate, I will never go back to the two-person brake bleeding method. Never. I think it's going to work even better on the front because the front are more free flowing than the rear. So if you have a soft pedal, ideally you're going to see air bubbles in your line, which means you're making progress and getting the air out. If you don't see any air bubbles, then you're either trapped in your ABS module or you just haven't done enough bleeding. So here's the finished product. You've got the sprayer and the hose comes out, comes along into a quarter inch adapter from your hose to a quarter inch threaded M MPT fitting into this three-way T. Then you have your gauge that screws into here and then another fitting that goes back to the hose and then another fitting that goes back to a threaded uh, quarter inch fitting here and you drill the cap and cut the center out of that rubber piece and then screw the fitting in and even if you screw it in it's going to be it's going to leak air so you've got to, on the inside put some sealant or glue or something on the inside to stop airflow And that is the whole setup. Now, it came the sprayer came with this, which you discard. And if you really want to be, you know, grown up about the operation of it, um, you would actually put brake fluid in your reservoir, say, you know, a liter in there. And inside the reservoir, there's a hose that comes all the way down to the bottom, so that as air is pushing down, it's not air that will come up in your tube into the brake reservoir it's actually brake fluid that will come up and in, into your brake reservoir. Now, I didn't care about that. I'm only bleeding, um, you know, one line at a time. In fact, I bled the back brakes and then went up and checked the reservoir and it was still over, over half full, like in between the min and the max. So I released the pressure, undid the cap, topped up the reservoir and put the cap back on and then pumped it up again. So I did it all with air and I did not put any fluid in this. But if you have a huge, I don't know, big, big truck or something, lots of lines, a school bus or something, probably a good idea to put some brake fluid in here and then have it pump brake fluid into your reservoir so that your reservoir never runs dry. That's how it's constructed. Good luck with your do-it-yourself projects.